Alrighty, we are rolling through Chattanooga on the way home. Well, well it's basically the interstate, but this is the lake. And uh, I should have turned it on before the bridge, but oh well. But uh, we coming over here. Like I said, it's about 11.40. We're about to make a run back to North Carolina, so this is going to be a fun one. At least, uh, at least I'm, in, I'm actually kind of excited for this one. I always enjoy riding at night, and uh, to do it in a different environment is always, always fun. Um, yeah, because that's that uh, Chickamauga Lake, and uh, I visited my good buddy Drew, ate dinner, hung out for a while, and then we're going to ride back to the cabin. Uh, I'll check in with y'all later. Uh, see you in a bit. Alrighty, y'all. We're here at uh, the start, or technically the end of 129, or at least the Dragon. We're here sitting here at the Harley shop. It's uh, basically 2 o'clock in the morning, 5 till. Uh, we're getting ready to run through here. Gonna chill, take it easy. Got a nice full moon, so beautiful, a little bit of fog. So we're gonna just chill and take it easy. Hopefully this will be a pretty good run. I don't foresee any trouble. I'm gonna take it real easy. Head east on US. 29 south toward Tallahassee Road. Continue on US. 129 south for 37 miles. Yeah, so long story short, uh, I was at over to Chattanooga earlier today. And uh, it was just basically went to visit my buddy. I haven't seen him forever. Alright, that would let there be a little bit of light. Hopefully y'all can see just fine, but uh, I went to visit him, eat lunch, eat dinner with him. And then of course we talked till like almost, what, 11 o'clock, so. Needless to say, I got a very late start coming back, and then obviously I didn't leave in time uh, getting there, so. I kind of took my sweet time getting there as well, like I stopped a lot. And just kind of chilled. Which, you know, when you're on vacation, you, you get there when you get there. It's not something that I uh, really want to push. There's a dam. Pretty awesome. All right, they got a really nice lake system up here. Um, I'd really love to come up here and boat it sometime, but we'll see. I don't think I'll be anytime soon. But uh, every time I come up here, I'm here to ride bikes, not necessarily... Uh, anything else uh, it was really cool as I seen the, the guys camping back there that was a cool setup and uh, so we're gonna I'm gonna leave the camera rolling all the way through I might stop at the, uh, the store up here at the end of the end of the, the dragon and we'll see apparently I'm probably the only person that uh, gonna ride through here at night this is actually the second time I've done it um, so I did it two years ago before they repaved it and it was uh, it was a lot trickier now it's pretty nice smooth and uh, I'm just gonna pretty much take my time going through there I'm not gonna be hauling ass like I was earlier today there's no need like I said it's dark if something happens, you may have a, you got a long time until somebody else is coming through here. Um, much less like if they see you, like your odds are not good. So you just gotta really, really play it safe at night. You know, there's deer, bear, raccoons, possums. I hit a snake in the road, like not a tar snake, but an actual snake last time I came through here at night, so. Uh, my bike's set up pretty well for this. Um, like I said, I got plenty of light. 
you got good brakes. Um, that's like my bike's three inches over uh, the stock height through a road glide, so I have plenty of ground clearance. If I need to lean into a corner and just to make it stick, I can do that. Which, if I'm not moving, I shouldn't have to, but the bike has a lot of margin for error. Um, I don't think I'm, I don't think I've ridden to the limit of the bike yet, which I certainly hope I don't, but we'll see. Plus, uh, the heads up display, like the little map display on the screen, is uh, pretty much invaluable for checking your corners. Um, just seeing what's about to pop up so you're not surprised, like, you get like a uh, increasing radius or a decreasing radius uh, hairpin unexpectedly just ruins a lot of people's days. So, really glad I don't have to, you know, memorize every bit of the road. I got a pretty good feel for it, but, um, I don't have to, I can always just glance down and double check. Which is super, super valuable. Um, it's really been kind of, it's just nice having that little backup where you can check the road before you get to it and you can see what's coming up. Narrow bridge here, so. coming around the bottom of the lake. Uh, you can't really see it, but all the way to the right is just a straight lake. Like, uh, you, if you watch the earlier video I took today, you'll be able to see it pretty well, but uh, I don't know if you can see it on the screen or not, but it's a lot of water up there. And uh, right at night, like I'm running with the visor crack, like the windshield blocks like the lower half of the wind, so I'm just sitting in the pocket to where I don't get wind. And um, oh, there's a tree right there. Oh, that is nasty. That's another reason we're just gonna chill. So I guess that's what that car was telling me about. Um, you're just gonna have to keep a lookout. There may be some more debris up here. Uh, if he came all the way through, he should be fine. Like I said, they had some trees earlier down like Friday. Um, there's like two of them that uh, hit the road earlier up, so I'm just gonna kind of pick my way through this kind of kind of careful like if I can. At least that's the general idea. Yeah, we're about to start it. Coming up here, the first little part, all the way to the overlook, and. Um, I said, uh, I think I'll probably stop at the overlook just to, just to look around and stuff. Check myself. Make sure everything's uh, tip top shape after the first few curves. Uh, last time I rode through here, I seen a bear down here. So I'm, I'm really keeping the eyeballs peered on the corners. Like, I'm not so much on the center of the road where we're up here. It's more of I'm um, watching the ditches and stuff because I uh, don't want anything to surprise me. No vehicles. Turn around. Except delivery. So you can deliver to the gate. Alright, so. There's the start. Or, uh, this is a high crash area next to 11 miles. We're gonna go ahead and be in third because uh, this will be second and third gear literally the whole time. I wonder if I, yeah, I'm gonna just leave it, uh, leave the beams up. 
Yeah, we were just gonna chill because like it's slick, you know. I ain't got nothing to prove up here. I've gone through here fast enough. The whole goal is just to get home and not worry too much about it. All the way up to the overlooks. I wouldn't say it's tame, but it's not as, uh, like the turns are a little bit wider, like you got a little bit more to work with. When we get farther up, you'll really see like it gets tight. Like we got this one like bad hairpin that I'm not really a fan of it, but like I said, I didn't make the road, so you got what you got. So we'll probably drop down. second through here just because we got this hair pick coming up ah hit third just because drop it to second and then uh i'm gonna drop it to first just because like i said we got some debris there So we're kind of just, we're literally just going to chill this route. This is going to be a slow little trip. We are not hammering through here. I would be very surprised if I seen like any other motorcycles up here. I honestly don't think anybody else is crazy enough to even attempt it. There's probably somebody, but... probably the only one crazy to have to come through here on a bike like at literally two o'clock in the morning and this is not the first time this is actually the second time I've done this first one I didn't have much of a choice this one is just kind of like yeah I was lazy and spent a lot of time visiting and didn't make very good time and I'm perfectly okay with this because uh I've ridden the road a little lot recently and it's just one of these things that uh, I enjoy pushing the limits. I'm not going to ride it fast, not at night. I'm a little bit older than last time. Last time I was uh, a little bit, I was like, I was still in my 20s and uh, I wasn't, uh, I got a little impatient and decided to hustle. Plus, uh, I didn't have y'all to talk to, so that's actually going to help me a lot. Keep my mind moving, and, uh, you know, it just helps me to focus on the task, which is, like, getting back safely. But, I mean, this is a really good, uh, you'll get a really good view of this road. Just, like, how twisty it is, because you don't have anybody pushing the pace or anything. And at night, of course, obviously, it's a lot trickier, but honestly, like I said, it's also kind of, I mean, it's not what I would consider slick. A lot of people have said it's slick, but, all right, so this is the overlook. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to ease on through. There's no need to do anything, anything risky at all. Like I said, your odds are not good at seeing somebody come through here this time of the day, or technically this time of night. Like I said, I've seen that one car down at the bottom, and uh, the guys on the bikes camping, and there's literally the only guys I've seen since I got past uh, the road, and I don't think I'm gonna see very many more. 
Like I said, it's a pretty big drop off up here. So we're definitely just gonna keep it keep it safe and simple. like an eight minute pace. This will probably be more like a 20. I don't know exactly. Uh, exactly uh, what kind of pace it'll be, but I said, we're not doing bad, honestly. We'll probably be, we might average 20, maybe. I'll do like the math at, uh, when I'm editing it in the video and probably stick it in the comments, maybe. traffic or anything like just straight enjoying the road I wouldn't recommend this to anybody but uh, personally I really do enjoy it even though uh, like I said I'm still staying with well within the lines I'm pretty much just taking like the center lane hitting the little apexes and just really working on my line like I, I need to run like the wide line is what I need to be running with this bike now I can actually get the lean there's a the photo van it generally just stays up here keep the van up here just to store all their stuff like water equipment and whatnot and I, I don't know how often they take it in and out but we're gonna drop back down and just chill through here we'll go through a second but like I said a lot of these corners it's all about a lot, of, a lot of the Harleys have to like chop the corner off whereas it's like I can actually ride the outside line I'm just very much not used to it because I've always had to chop the inside because the bike wasn't tall enough so it's very strange the fact that or it's, it's unusual to me now that I'm able to actually run that outside line or at least the bike is actually capable of running it so it definitely uh, makes this road a very different um, experience versus like having to basically square off the corners because otherwise you'll literally scrape everything off because like the first time I took this bike up here I was pretty limited off of uh, what I could uh, actually do whereas as you can see like right here I'm literally just running the outside line and I can hit the apex back in. It's actually like really enjoyable. Because, yeah, then you can just slide it out. Like, this is like really, really good practice for learning the road. Again, wouldn't recommend it, but I said uh, this is uh, definitely going to benefit me if I try to get a good. Uh, Good run into tomorrow, probably. I don't really have to worry about other people. I can just go slow, set up my lines. 
That was a bump right there. I think I came in a little bit too much on that one. Yeah. So the road's not coming up too fast on me. I'm able to just kind of focus on hitting what I need to hit. And instead of redlining through first, I'm just chilling. Now this is like a really beautiful spot. I'll slow down like, it's just cool. You know, I don't know how well y'all can see that or not, but like, it's, especially up there with the full moon, it's just nice. Yeah, we're about to go ahead and get moving again, but I figured I'd stop there. tight corner we saw one car to a one SUV cars from when we started like that's like like I said if you have something to go wrong your odds are not good up here them two guys probably ain't gonna see you just awesome up here I right, say so we're I wouldn't say we're making good time but like we're being uh, safe and that's what's more important at least on this run I could probably go a lot faster. Well, I know I can go faster, but I am not pushing it. I have too much responsibility on this trip to risk it all. Plus, it's like I'm not, not in full leather, so this ain't the time. You got really just one goal is to get through safely. And if you do that, you succeeded. But I mean, if you respect the road, and you know, just 
Just kind of chill and take it easy. You won't really have any trouble. Like the heads up display is like super nice because I don't have to guess at all at what's coming up. Like I know exactly what's coming up. Like that hairpin. So I can be in the right gear. I can be slowed down for it. You know. I don't really have to keep a map in my head per se. Which is it is a handicap. Oh. Um, because you're always better off memorizing the road and being able to read a road. Um, like you should be able to set up the corner, recognize the corner, and uh, you pick your line accordingly, what's going to get you safely through it at whatever speed you want to go. Whereas with like this map, like I'll look down, maybe I'll be a little hesitant because I'll see, oh, I go left, right. You know what I mean? Then I'm going up a hill. Yeah, I give it a little bit of gas right there. You can see just how like hard you can actually rip it during the day. All right, I just need to settle down and uh, focus on this last little bit. Like I, said, uh, like I said, it opens up in a few spots and you can kind of, you can open the bike up a little bit. But the vast majority of it is all about cornering skills. Like, this is one of those roads that will make you a better rider or you will find out uh, what kind of weaknesses you've got. Or hopefully you won't find out, but uh, it's a very humbling road to ride. Like I said, yeah, you just have like a lot of elevation changes, a lot of twists and turns, and then you got the added difficulty of uh, opposite direction traffic, not to mention people, uh, like I said, if you're like a little slower people or faster, like you have to learn how to maneuver the pull-offs. If you're like, if, you, if you're slower, you got to be checking your mirrors to hit the pull-offs, way like that one right there, and just let the people that are, uh, going fast by because nothing's gonna like they're just gonna get impatient if you miss like if you miss one uh, it's whatever if you miss two it's like okay come on now if you miss three okay you're just a dickhead and uh you know nothing irritates me more than like somebody that like i'm trying to have a pretty good pace through here you know and uh somebody's just like absolutely just won't get off it won't move and I'm not the kind of person that's going to pass on the double yellow. I don't. Not on this road. And pretty much in general, like, I respect that that line. So, I, I kind of depend on people pulling over uh, if I'm catching them. If somebody's catching me, they're doing a lot. And I will gladly let them go. Like, if it's a bike, I'll just move to the side and motion them by. You can do a little hand wave and let them slide by you in the lane. Yeah, this road is definitely a lot longer when you're taking it slow. Normally I'm done by now. Probably, I'll be probably sitting at the store by now most days. Well, I'll look to see exactly how long this video ends up being. I know at the start, like I started a little early, but I wanted to get the store and some of the scenery in just to kind of give a scale and the magnitude of this place like I mean it's just a phenomenally beautiful place like I mean just look at it you're going through a literal tunnel of trees I mean what could be better I mean I don't I really don't know what to tell you like this is literally like just beautiful and amazing scenery obviously probably most people won't have this amount of lights I got so 
They might not have the same view at night. It might be a lot sketchier, which I remember it being a lot sketchier when I came through. Uh, I was riding a Supermoto, a DRZ. Like, the light was... Yeah, the, the bright light was like a regular headlight. And uh, the regular headlight might as well not have even been on. Like, you didn't get much. Like, my regular headlights, that's the difference between that and my high beam. Like, the regular lights are pretty bright. So... I said it's like especially like right now it's just really important to look through the turn um, I, I catch myself like sometimes like looking like not to where I need to be I'll be looking at where I'm at versus where I need to be like I'm looking where I'm at I need to be already looking in the corner so I'll follow through like I said you know you're gonna go wherever you look so it's just you have to trust your body to follow through. And uh, your muscle memory will just make it simple. Like right there, that was a very good crisp setup. I said the flow here has just been really good tonight. Only been like a few little areas where like we may have like lost momentum. But ideally you should just be able to be smooth through here. Like I said, uh, smooth is fast, fast is smooth. Herky jerky ain't gonna make you quick. You see like right there, like I, I glanced down at the map and uh, just to see what I got coming up. I'm gonna see, I think this I could do this in second gear just fine. Yeah. Yeah, that came out pretty good. I just gotta watch the corner exit speed and get back up. Not that I'm pushing it, it's just, yeah, see like through here, a lot of guys just absolutely balls to the wall, hammer through. And a lot of times they'll end up crossing the double yellow because they can see and you know they're squaring off these turns whereas i always like that's about right there is about as far as i'm going to come i'm going to try to come out the double and then slide back in but still give myself a little extra room and we got this hairpin coming up which you know i'm aware of it before the sign so i'm already riding the left side and i'm gonna come in second gear and then drop the first which I dropped too soon. I probably wouldn't have needed to drop till about there. But, like I said, we're being very conservative because uh, we have literally no margin for error tonight. So, I mean, literally none. I've seen literally two cars since I started up here. Hey, it's the Welcome to North Carolina sign. We are in it now. And believe it or not, like these last little bits here, while it may not be technically as bad, um, I've always thought like this li this little like hook curve down here at the bottom has been one of the sketchiest moments for me. Like you're all excited about you did it, you made it. Uh, not yet, buddy. Hold your horses. You got at least one or two more that can uh, jack you up pretty quick. A lot of people get focused on that sign, get target fixated. Or get target fixated on that one and uh, bad juju.
you know what we're gonna take a oh yeah he's got the he's got the gate locked so that's uh where the actual dragon is so we're gonna go down uh to the right down to robbinsville and uh i'll leave it running down at least until uh we get down there i know i got nothing better to do and uh I said it's 2.30. That was a bat. Good. Get all the mosquitoes. Eat them all up. I normally ball through here, but... Uh, I am taking it easy. Super easy. Like I said, I don't think I took video of this little section. So it's just me like cruising down it. And even when we get to the bottom, I'm probably just gonna chill because uh, I know there's some deer out there. And to be honest, that would that would really ruin my, uh, well, I guess the start of the new day. That'd be a bad way to start the day off with a deer in the fender. not be a fan and I mean I've done it before and uh, yeah I have no desire to repeat that one oh my god they just put a reflector like not in the center of the road I wonder why they did that maybe to help with a maybe to help line people's eyes back up it's actually it's a lot nicer than what it was. The cat eyes are a nice touch, at least in my opinion. Yeah, the main reason I come back through here on the way back is if I'm a little bit sleepy, this will keep me awake and perk me back up. Uh -huh. At least it's, it's very, very good mental stimulation. You have to like actively participate, otherwise uh, you're not going to have a very good time. You can't really zone out at all on any of these roads. You got to be, I mean, if you, if you take it easy like I'm taking it easy, you don't have to be in tip top shape, but you got to be, you got to be pretty much 100% focused, which I guess I'm talking mostly to help keep my focus. If that makes sense. Just to keep my mind moving. We're going to have a little downhill slope. Like this little spot here is kind of fun. Yeah, coming up the mountain, a lot of guys pull over here or a little bit down at the bottom. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely rip coming up here. A little engine braking action. We'll kick it in a second. Cause there's a tight hairpin here at the bottom and there's like a pullover on the left. So everybody like pulls over here coming up. When you're coming up, this corner's not that bad because you're not going real fast coming over the bridge, hopefully, because it's it's pretty tight on the inside. On the outside I've seen people go wide and almost smack the bridge. Give it a little bridge action. opens up a little bit we kind of just put it in third gear and chill there's a few little tight turns up here but the rest of 129 is not nearly as bad I've ridden pretty much well all of it around this area and I 
says it's 55 through here, so we'll probably we'll keep it probably about 55, you know. I don't really see myself going much over that because of uh, the visibility and such. Shake, make sure my lights come off. Sweet. Yeah. lighting relays we got hung before this trip so I replaced it and uh, it took a little bit to break it in I didn't necessarily want to always switch every time but uh, it's been good now get the feel of this is gonna be this is gonna just be one of those like super long videos I'm gonna put out and uh, nobody's gonna watch it so if you see this part leave me a comment and said that uh, either you enjoyed it you hate it but you at least watch it give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down cuz uh, I actually really enjoyed making this one this has just been one of the, like the chillest rides of this year for me and uh, this gives everybody kind of like a a good look at like how the dragon looks at like bad conditions like I mean it's a little wet it's a little damp and obviously it's two o'clock 2 30 right now so when we started it was literally five minutes to two so it gives you a really good idea of just uh, what what your worst case scenario is. Now you can see like how easily I just kind of went through it. Which obviously I'm cheating because I have a map in front of me. Without that it's a lot harder. But uh, the road signs are there and like if you've ridden it during the day a few times um, you should be alright. I definitely don't recommend this. Like I said, it's probably it's way more risky than uh, I'm making it look like. Um, I'm just a little bit crazy when it comes to riding bikes, and I'll do I'll do stuff that I probably shouldn't. But um, you know, life isn't worth living if you don't try to live it. At least that's my philosophy. I said I. I I, I would hate to be old and be like I wish I did that or you know I don't really want to have any like regrets that uh, on a lot on like an unfulfilled life nothing to me would be more disappointing than sitting back in a rocking chair and realizing like you know what I really didn't do anything it's like I got to get out accomplish stuff help people inspire people and in general uh, just uh, enjoy God's creation um, like I said that's one of the uh, mandates that he gave us was to glorify God and enjoy his creation so all the glory goes to him because every time I think I've seen it he just shocks me and I'm far from what I would consider a, a model Christian. Like, I don't really go to church much. I do pray fairly regularly. Um, have a lot of communication with God. And in general, I hang out with a lot of uh, low lives, uh, people that really need uh, positive influence and stuff. So. I kind of feel like that's that's where I belong so and hopefully I've made a difference for a lot of people we'll see that's not up to me to decide that but I'm very uh, 
I'm very satisfied with how uh, I've been li how I've lived life, man. Like I said, if something happens to me, I will die happy, no matter what. Everybody seems to be like afraid to die, but I have a hundred percent confidence in where I'm going after this. So it's like I'm not really. I'm, it doesn't bother me anymore. It's no one really wants to die, but at the same time, it's one of those things that like it's inevitable. And I really, if someone offered me eternal life here, like, I don't think I would take it. That was a, look like a UTV or like a Jeep or something. That's three cars. So, your odds are really bad. It's three people, that's all you get. And you hope one of them sees you because he probably isn't going all the way through. You never know. There's a lot of people that work on one side or the other, but um, they're not gonna be looking for somebody. They're gonna be just trying to get through safely. It's like 240. Looks like we'll be there like dead on three. We'll run this video until we get into Robbinsville. Um, like I said, the mileage isn't a lot. Like we haven't really gone far at all. But these roads take time and yeah, I mean they just. You just got to take your time going through here. Ride within your limit, you know. You definitely don't want to exceed your limits. And not just yours, like the conditions really matter, like, because you may be able to ride one way or the other, but like I said, it's, right now it's a little bit damp, it's a little bit moist, you know, it's not, not uh, the optimum grip. I got super sticky rear tire and like a like a medium compound in the front so I'm a, I got plenty of grip but I'm not going to push it. I got other shit to do and uh, there's no glory to be had here. Like nobody wins this race. The only one that you win is if you make it home in one piece. It's like I'm just scanning left to right, left to right, ditch to ditch. Um, I got my headlights set up so I get a lot of ditch light. After hitting two deer, I want to be able to see the ditches. Sorry for all these folks when uh whenever I go up the driveway. I got like a mile driveway to go up. It's like almost straight up a hill. So I certainly hope I don't wake everybody up. I'm gonna try to sneak in, but we will see. 50-50. And the sketchiest part of this whole trip is uh the driveway. It's pretty sharp and that's probably the hardest corner out of all of them. But it's uphill, twist back to the left like almost like a complete 90. Pretty gnarly. Yeah, that really bad voice crack. I've, uh, I've been up since 4.30 this morning. Uh, 
I'm running on fumes. I had to stop. I stopped back there before this road. Got me some. Uh, got me a chai. Ate half a chocolate bar. Give me some like a good burst of energy, which is why I've been pretty peppy. And then uh, rehydrated with some Gatorade with some electrolytes. So that's kind of key. Like you definitely want to stay hydrated. Because uh, if you start being dehydrated, the first thing that starts to be affected is your mind and your decision making. And uh, you need every bit of that you can get up here. I had a choice between a Red Bull and the Gatorade, and I was sitting there thinking about it. I said, you know what, I'd much rather have the electrolytes and have my brain functioning completely rather than just have a ton of energy. Uh, I may have been like tempted to go too fast. And, uh, you know, if I was crashing and burning, like, my eyes were starting to get tired or whatnot, I would have probably gotten the Red Bull. I drank one, like, two stops before, and uh, I've been pretty good since. And then I, I uh, what else did I get? Yeah, I got, I ate a chocolate bar then, too. So, secret trick, uh, keeping yourself uh, hydrated and energy-aided. Like if you need like a little like a slow release over like 30 minutes to an hour, the chocolate bar is quick energy. Um, you know, it's like because I ate it about 30 minutes ago, give or take, and it's just just now it's starting to wear off. Which chocolate's got like caffeine in it, but it's a slower release than just like slamming an energy drink where you just get hammered with it and I've been trying to kind of lay off of it left right left right looking for any like reflection because the biggest thing you'll catch is a, like an eyeball like most animals eyeballs are going to reflect light pretty 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 bright and a lot of times it's going to freeze them so you'll have a quick heads up starting to see a few more vehicles considering it's like three o'clock so this road will get consistent traffic but I don't expect them to see you we still got a good ways to go like even with us making such a good time, or relatively good time in the dark, like, you see just how long it takes to go anywhere. Like, the road up to the Dragon is a, is, is a experience in itself. Um, I had like two choice. I had three choices to go back. I could have come down 74, which is like 20 minutes quicker. Um, I could have come down uh, the Chair of the Hollis skyline, but or uh, whatever it's called. But uh, the main thing, reason I didn't want to go down there is I know there's some really bad hairpins and I haven't gone through there this year. So I don't know that road well. So I said, uh, uh, so my thought process was, I've ridden the Dragon a bunch of times already this weekend. I'm pretty confident I can get through there without any issues. And, uh, We're still on 129 here. Um, this goes all the way into Robbinsville and it loops all the way down. I think it's it's 74 or 75, but it, it, it goes down to there.
pretty sure like most of the cars I passed are like absolutely like flabbergasted uh, to see a bike this time of night. I don't blame them. Wouldn't recommend it. Most people are scared to ride it during the day or a little sketched out by it. But uh, in all honesty, like it's like with anything, just exp understand your limitations, know yourself, and then you'll pretty much be fine. And then a lot of it's just self-discipline. Like the more disciplined you keep your mind and your body, the easier it is. Like all the guys I've been riding with this weekend, um, they're like done. They're cooked. Or like the vast majority of them. Like there's one or two that rides a lot and they're fine, but everybody else is like sore and they're sleeping in in the morning. And it's like I've been up at like literally 4.30, 5 o'clock every single morning. And if it wasn't raining, I would have gone to ride. I would have picked a road and rode it. Just because. This is going to turn into like an hour long video and I'm perfectly okay with that. Had to put a fresh battery to start. My old one was running on fumes. Hopefully this thing won't die before we get there because uh, we haven't been pushing a very fast pace. into Robbinsville so uh, once we get here in town it's probably uh, where I'm going to say goodbye I said you slow down coming through here it's like a 45 every now and then you'll see like a cop sitting back in here or what not so just kind of respect the town as best you can. Be respectful of the other people that are living here and whatnot. Or at least I'm going to try to sneak through here without making too much noise. Got my headlight down. This is not a quiet bike, so it's a little... It's tricky being sneaky sneaky. Sneaky snacky. 35, so we'll just we'll run third gear about as slow as I can go. Just kind of put through here. And uh Yeah, we'll stay on until at least the gas station up here. It looks like my uh my camera's about about done. But we're pretty close to the end. Oh, yeah. I said there's a shell station. It's only like another like well it says seven minutes, three miles. Turn left onto North Carolina one forty three. That's not bad at all. Anyways, yeah, this is Robinsville. You got basically two gas stations. There's a BP down there as well. Wendy's everything closes at like nine or ten, so you don't have very many options. Alrighty y'all, I will see y'all later.